Welcome to lesson 1 of module 1, uh, Chemical Reactivity. The topic for this lesson is Basic Concepts of Acid-Base Theory. And readings from this topic are found in Chapter 6 of Chemistry Cube, as well as Chapter 16 of General Chemistry by Petrucci et al., which is found in the library. Now, acids and bases are encountered in real life by all of us, uh, from fruits such as citrus, oranges, you know, uh, apples, grapes, pears, uh, as well as other food items, to uh, household items such as laundry detergents, dishwashing liquids, to cosmetics such as shampoos and lotions and face makeup, to also in the environment uh, where in many places acid rain is an important, is a very serious problem. And so there is great need for the study of acids and bases. Now, at the end of this lecture, students will review some of the very basic concepts of acid, acids and bases, particularly by defining acids and bases according to Arrhenius theory, which is the first proposed theory on acids and bases, then exploring what happens when acids and bases are mixed, and highlighting some of the, the limitations of the definitions of acids and bases according to Arrhenius. Then we'll turn our attention to uh, looking at defining acids and bases according to a new theory, uh, according to Bronsted and Laurie, and using chemical uh, reactions, identifying Bronsted, Laurie acids and bases, and also conjugate acids and bases, as the case may be. And then exploring what happens when acids and bases are mixed. Now, it wasn't until uh, the end of the 19th century uh, where Savante Arrhenius defined what an acid and a base was. Acids and bases were known uh, from a very long time and uh, people at the time, before the, that time, actually understood that acids and bases uh, are distinct in their chemical properties. Now, but, it, but Arrhenius at the time dis defined an acid as a substance that ionizes in water to give H plus cations and anions, and bases are substances that ionize in water to give uh, hydroxide anions and cations. Now, if you look at the interaction in aqueous medium of H plus and OH minus, we essentially see that these two ions essentially react to form H2O, and so an acid base reaction essentially, for the most part, based on Arrhenius' theory, involves the formation of water, uh, and we call this neutralization. And he, this is the, the most widely understood reaction where we have uh, HCl or hydrogen hydrochloric acid uh, plus sodium hydroxide reacting to give us sodium chloride salt and water. Of course, we should know that um, the sodium chloride salt are in solution. Uh, in fact, the anions are distinct, are separated from each other in solution, and are surrounded by water molecules. And of course, if we were to evaporate off the water, we would then end up with having uh, solid sodium chloride. Now, one of the now, there are some limitations associated with Arrhenius' theory, and the main ones are, one, that it applies only to aqueous media, or reactions in aqueous media. Uh, that is to say that reactions involving organic solvents or inorganic solvents uh, do not essentially necessarily give rise to the formation of H plus or OH minus ions in solution. And so that basically limits the description of an acid or definition of an acid in a base based on what Arrhenius said. And also, it is known that some substances, particularly uh, alkaline substances, for example, ammonia, uh, do not have hydroxide groups. And therefore, uh, uh, the definition of a base is very limited. And so it wasn't until 1923 where Johannes Bronsted and Martin Laurie, two independent chemists, independently defined an acid and a base, uh, uh, which essentially extends the definition beyond what Arrhenius proposed. And they defined an acid as a substance 
that donates H plus and a base that donates sorry that accepts H plus. Uh, in other words, an acid is a substance that is a proton donor and a base is a substance that is a proton acceptor. The word proton essentially uh, comes from the fact that if we think of hydrogen and we take away uh, the or, or the electron is lost from the hydrogen, then we're left essentially with a nucleus that is predominantly a proton. And so the hydrogen that is lost or accepted or donated or accepted in these reactions are essentially described as proton. And so an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor according to Bronsted and Laurie. And so in an acid-base reaction then, uh, according to Bronsted and Laurie, there is proton transfer from the acid which donates the proton to the base that accepts the proton. And let us look at an example of that where we uh, can identify proton transfer from an acid and a base. Here we have hydrogen chloride gas bubbling into water. Now this is very strange probably to you because um, we're looking at an acid-base reaction and you're seeing water. Uh, what is the water? Is it an acid or a base? I mean, we don't necessarily know of water acting as either an acid or a base. I mean, some of us may know that acid, uh, water can be uh, amphoteric. That is, in some cases, depending on what it is reacting with, it can act as an acid or a base. But generally, it is not something that would have come to our minds immediately. But in this case, when we have hydrogen chloride being uh, dissolved in water, Essentially what happens is that we have the proton being lost or being donated from the hydrogen chloride to give us chloride anions and the water accepting that proton giving us H3O+. So essentially we have the transfer of proton from one molecule to the other molecule. Now let us look at that a little bit more using this visual aid of the molecules. Here we have the covalent bonded uh, hydrogen chloride molecule and this hydrogen essentially is going to, or the proton, is going to break free from the bond and is going to tra be transferred to the oxygen of the H2O molecule to form an oxonium cation. Of course this oxonium cation is responsible for the acidic properties of aqueous solutions. Now let us look at what happened we have the donation of the proton from the hydrogen chloride because it's donating the proton, it's acting as an acid and the water molecule because it's accepted the proton, it is acting as a base. Now remember that Arrhenius theory applies only to aqueous media. Here we have an acid-base reaction not involving water. Let us see what happens. We have hydrogen chloride gas reacting with ammonia gas, essentially giving us a solid salt ammonium chloride. Uh, essentially what is happening is that the proton uh, is donated from the hydrogen chloride molecule and is accepted by the ammonia molecule. Essentially what we're having is a transfer of proton from the HCl to the um, uh, ammonia and he hence the HCl is acting as an acid and the ammonia is acting as a base. Let us look at another reaction. Here we have ethanoic acid being dissolved into water and this essentially is a reversible reaction because uh, what is formed is um, uh, an ethanoid anion and an H3O plus cation and in fact, depending on the equilibrium situation, that is to say, if we were to force the equilibrium uh, or if we were to change the conditions so that we can force the equilibrium to the, to, back to the products, we essentially have a dynamic equilibrium occurring. Now let us look at what is happening. We have here our, um, our molecule, our CH3CO2H molecule, and it is going to donate its proton to the H2O molecule to form an ethanoid anion and an H3O plus cation. And because this molecule here is donating a proton, it is acting as an acid. And again, we have water. Because it's accepting a proton, it is acting as a base. Now, 
Remember I said that this is an equilibrium reaction and so if we force the, we can force the equilibrium to the left uh, essentially what happens here is that the ethanoate anion is going to or is likely to accept a proton to form back or acid and the H3O plus cation is likely to give up that proton to form back or water molecule. Here we have acceptance of a proton, hence this ethanoate anion is acting as a base and here we have our H3O plus donating a proton and hence it is acting as an acid. And we call these two uh, species a conjugate base and a conjugate acid because well conjugate uh, means uh, directly linked or connected to that is to say that our conjugate base here is directly linked to our acid and our conjugate acid is directly linked to our water in other words every acid in an acid base reaction has a conjugate base and every base in a acid base reaction has a conjugate acid and we essentially have uh, a, a conjugate acid base pair and usually we have two conjugate acid base pairs when the reactants we, when we have two reactors now we can essentially consider uh, a conjugate base of an acid as an acid minus a proton here we have the conjugate base it is basically the acid minus a proton right and we can consider the conjugate acid of the base a base plus a proton that is to say our conjugate acid of a base is a base plus a proton. Let us explore those ideas using this concept question. For the proton transfer equilibrium of HCl with water, identify the conjugate acid base pairs involved. Now the strategy that one needs to use in solving this question or these questions is firstly to write out the equation for the equilibrium reaction and then for the forward reaction identify the acid and the base and then from there you'll be able to identify the conjugate base and the conjugate acid. So here we have the reaction HCN aqueous plus H2O. And we have a reversible reaction uh, so we have the HCN losing a proton to form the cyanide anion and the H2O uh, is accepting the proton to form the H3O plus. So essentially we're having proton transfer from an acid which donates the proton to a base which accepts the proton. Now if we were to consider the reversible reaction uh, this cyanide anion is able to accept a proton to form our HCN again and so it is acting as a base but a conjugate base because it is directly linked to the HCN and this H3O plus is donating uh, its proton to form the H2O and because it's donating it's an acid and a conjugate acid because it's directly linked to the base. So in this reaction the conjugate acid base pairs are HC and C and minus the acid and the base and the uh, conjugate acid and the um, sorry the conjugate the acid and the conjugate base and the conjugate acid and the base. Let us look at another example. We have pure ethanoic acid reacting with liquid ammonia to form ions in a proton transfer equilibrium. Write an equation for the reaction and, and identify the conjugate acid base pairs involved. The strategy again involves writing out the equation for the equilibrium reaction and then for the forward reaction identify the acid and the base and then we're able to identify the conjugate acid and base pairs. So here we have our ethanoic acid. Well we know it's now an acid but still an ethanoic acid uh, reacting with ammonia. We have a reversible reaction and the acid here is going to donate its proton and form a conjugate base right which is the ethanoate anion and that proton is going to be transferred from the acid to the base which accepts that proton and hence it's a base obviously um, and to forming the ammonium 
anion, the NH4 plus cation, sorry. And so if we consider the reversible reaction, we have the conjugate acid ammonium plus, uh, I should say ammonium ion, uh, it is going to give up the, one of the protons to form back the base and so it's a conjugate acid an acid donates protons and so this conjugate acid is directly linked to this ammonia base and this conjugate base is or this ethanoate anion is going to accept a proton from the ammonium uh, to give us back our acid and hence because it's don it's, a, it's because it's accepting a proton it is acting as a base and more so a conjugate base and is hence directly linked to the acid. So the conjugate acid base pairs in this reaction are, are acid, ethanoic acid as an acid, and our conjugate base ethanoate, and our ammonium in a cation as our conjugate acid and our base ammonia. So let us summarize what we have learned. We have been introduced to essentially what we know acids and bases are as described by Arrhenius' theory that an acid is a substance that ionizes in water to give H plus cations and anions and a base is a substance that ionizes in water to give hydroxide anions and cations but Arrhenius' theory is limited only to aqueous media and it doesn't always involve the formation of uh, and we know that some bases don't always involve the pr presence of hydroxide ions and so we're now introduced to a new concept a broader definition of acids and bases uh, proposed by Bronsted and Laurie where they state that an acid is a substance that donates a proton a proton donor and a base is a substance that accepts a proton a proton acceptor and reactions involving acids and bases as according to uh, uh, Bronson and Laurie involve a conjugate base acid base pairs undergoing proton transfer. So overall, the basis of Bronson and Laurie theory is proton transfer from an acid to a base. So for the next session, for the next lesson, uh, we want you to explore the concepts a little bit more by firstly reading box 6.2. Now, box 6.2 looks at salvation. Acid-base reactions, for the most part, involve uh, the formation of ions and cations in solution, uh, and essentially, cations and anions uh, are surrounded by water molecule. And the whole idea of solvation is is a surrounding of cations and anions by water molecule. So, have a read of that, and you'll get a better picture of what essentially is involved in solvation uh, in aqueous media. And box 6.2 looks at alkalis and as in acids and their in impact on human tissue and this forms a prelude to what we're going to be covering in the next lesson which basically looks at strengths of acids and bases. Um, attempt this concept review question one as an extension of some of the questions that we looked at in this in this topic and then read topic 6.2 which looks at the strengths of acids and bases in preparation for the next lecture. So that's it for today. See you next time.